We have September on the board. Uh, December 17, 2019, Royal Palm Beach Strikers Soccer Board Meeting. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All righty. Call to order at 6.32 p.m. Uh, we'll go very quickly with uh, our, our items of discussion. Uh, roll call, Fernando Casale. Here. Um, Corinne Corbacero. Here. Vanessa Donadio. Here. Uh, Village Liaison, Steve Here. Horner. And uh, Amy Santiago Treasure will be joining us shortly. And uh, Sean O'Connor, our Vice President, is unable to attend today. Uh, so we'll be discussing some things later on regarding Sean. Um, reading and approval of previous month's meeting minutes. Um, did everyone have an opportunity to go over the minutes sent out? Uh, yes, I did. Okay, any objections? Nope. Would anybody like to put a motion forth? To motion to accept. I second that. Uh, motion to accept the November board meetings minutes will be accepted and approved. Um, president's report. Um, nothing really to discuss. It's off time. We normally don't even have a board meeting in December. Uh, so uh, we'll just move forward. Treasurer's report for the recreation portion. Uh, once Amy gets here, we will go over that. D DOC report, again, nothing to discuss. Uh, registrar referee report, uh, Shinoi Rakaraj, our registrar and referee assigner is not present at this time. I'm unaware of whether or not he's gonna be joining us today. Uh, open comments from membership regarding the recreation program. Although everybody's wanting to say something, nobody's standing up, so we'll just keep going. <laughs> we'll move forward. Uh, unfinished business. Uh, Again, this was discussed previously. Uh, just a reminder, no use of fields to those outside of the program uh, during Royal Palm Beach permitting. Uh, if there are any issues, there's a phone number that's posted on the agenda um, to call in uh, to help remove people that are using the fields that are not authorized. Now, yes. I, will, I will send another email to all the coaches and managers. You know, I know the Tuesday and Thursdays, it's everybody in the field. Mm -hmm. And we'll have a Monday, Wednesday. Wednesdays, uh, Wednesdays continue to be an issue because of that same adult yeah. group that we. But I told you yesterday. About two years now. So yeah, and they, they they disappeared for a little bit, and then they come back. And I, I think because I'm not out there on Wednesday nights anymore, I believe it's a little easier for them, and they figure that they're going to go unnoticed. Um, so again, that number over there, if I you're you out there. Yesterday, I, I think nobody's there. All right, and that's why I killed the lights. Okay, but I killed the lights yesterday regardless. Okay, because remember the 17s and 18th yeah. the tournament, so they no practice over there. Our older teams were in North Carolina for the weekend, so uh, they, they didn't practice yesterday. Yeah, and I did notice on, was it either Saturdays or Sundays, there is a, a, a bunch of uh, people training for, I guess, it's flag football. Not a lot. There may be like four uh, Yeah, or five. and I actually know one of the guys. He's uh, one of the assistant coaches. He's been in our program for a while. Okay. He's out there uh, with two or three guys. They're doing like conditioning stuff. He, uh, I've asked them if you're going to do that stuff. Just try not to do it on the same area of the field okay. where it's just getting repetitive usage. There and, are uh, guys there right now. Are there? Mm -hmm. there? Are any of the, Well, our teams are all out there. So, I mean, we, sh we should, you know, we'll see. I mean, adults are out there. Are there adult guys? All right. Again, you guys, if you're out there, I mean, call the number. They'll come out there. That's what the yeah, numbers. That's, that's what happened to me last time. They were throwing the football. And football guys, I really don't mind. Yeah, I mean, that's to, yeah. Football guys, guys, I don't. Although there should be no exceptions because then it sets a precedent. But yeah, I just uh, I'm, I just don't want any organized groups, uh, which then turn into members from from other uh, programs coming over here. Uh, new business, uh, website issues. I sent an email out. Our website's been down for like a month. 
you know, the, the, the way, I, don't, I have no idea how people are registering for the rec program. Well, the regular. Yeah, did you have problems getting in when the, you registered? No, it, was, it was about a month ago, so. All right, you might have gotten in before. Well, what's happening is RPB Strikers does not work, nor does RPB Soccer. The only thing, the only way to get on is if you go Royal Palm Beach Strikers dot com. Oh. So that's how I go. So that's why. No, alrighty, and, and because everything's supposed to tie up, and and from what I've seen, um, and I, me and Amy looked into it a little bit. Um, one of the names, I think it might be RPB Soccer, is registered with GoDaddy. Mm -hmm. uh, then you've got RPB Strikers is registered with another group. And then Royal Palm Beach Strikers is registered with one and one, which is who we use. And so we have to get a hold of, I don't know how to do it, whatever. I, I asked well, Amy. I use one and one and have them register all of the names. Well, that's why I, I forwarded that to her and I said, do it. When they sent the annual renewal thing, you know, our thing was going to run out or whatever. I told her just see what they can, she can do about doing this. So I'm not sure if she's been, I know she has a lot to do also, so. Um, so we're going to get on that. Also, I, you know, I've been in discussion for the last six months with Demosphere, and Demosphere is really wanting to, to, to do our website and all that stuff. They offer, you know, a, a great deal of things. I believe it's $1,000 uh, for them to do a custom website for us, and then after that, it's $100 a month. Prior to us using Wix, we were paying $100 a month and giving it to the guy from Wellington uh, to, to do it, so it would really be no difference. Um, it's a professional looking website. It's going to be dependable. I mean, it's used by, you know, lots and lots of people you know, across the country. Uh, and they're, they're pretty much designed for soccer. So, um, so we will see. The only thing that has prevented me from jumping ship is I, I just don't have the time to spend doing the, it's, we need, we need to get like a, like a, a, a web guy, whether it's Joe's Ann, or uh, Diego, Diego's offered to do it also. Um, and we can go ahead and have you know him do it and be the, the point of contact and then learn everything and then just kind of show us how to do things or show none of us how to do things. So, you know, quite frankly, I don't even want to know how to do it because then I'll go on there trying to play around. <laughs> All righty, Amy is joining us now. Um, Referee assignments. Um, did everybody get the email that I forwarded? Uh, apparently that was sent to uh, myself, Fernando, and Shinoy. Shinoy had responded and said that uh, he was going to address it at the next board meeting. I mean, was that discussed Monday. last year? He wasn't month? there. Yeah, he wasn't, he wasn't there. there. All right. So I, I saw it again. I saw it again um, uh, the other the other day. So I've included it on the agenda. Um, you know, the the it, it it was from the mother and from the uh, teenage girl herself. Um, questioning why she is no longer uh, permitted to referee games over here when she was a member of our program for for a number of years I guess and all of a sudden she's no longer to referee over here uh, well the policy that the board enacted prior to the season um, and approved was that um, unless you have no affiliation with another program you are not permitted to referee with our program um, it has nothing to do with any personal feelings or any biases or anything of that nature regarding any of the referees. Um, what it is, it, it's, it, it was put into place uh, simply because of, of the, the problems and the issues we've had over the years with uh, referees that have been assigned to referee in our program that have affiliation with other clubs. Um, basically recruiting kids from our recreation program and that's not only kids recruiting kids but also adults coming out here and recruiting kids that they're watching play while they're refereeing so you know i don't know if uh if, if anybody wants to put something else forward to um you know to to, to, to make uh uh you know the teenage girl that re requested this an exception to the rule or not um you know, she states in there that the only reason she no longer plays over with the strikers is because we didn't have a team for her to play any longer. But the reality of it is she was part of a team and she was one of the members of the team 
that decided to go and play elsewhere. And because of that and other members of that team, that caused us not to have a team. Well, and I think that's a big and I think that's, that's a big, big difference uh -huh. than us simply not having a team to play in. And she for. does have a team to play for. And she's currently playing for another team right but now. She but that's play, not but she can play our U nineteen. You know, like our, our Yeah, teachers. if she decide to play recreation, you know, if she plays competitive though know, is yeah. is the problem. And again, it, it has nothing to do with the history or anything like that, but I just wanted to clarify that, you know, I, I no, you my know. my point on this, you know, we force or tell the kids U18, U17 to take the classes. They take the classes, pay $200, and they never rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we go into the fields and we see half of the people, they are not for the club. Mm -hmm. You know? So, well, you know, again, you know, it's always been my my goal to to give back to the to, to the people that have given to our, or that continue to give to our club. And, um, you know, with the policy that we have set in place, you know, this was the first season, I believe, that we, we did this. And I didn't see any issues or problems uh, with the quality of the refereeing that we've had. I didn't see any issues or problems with the, the number of referees that were available. Um, I wanted to thank Shinoy for the good job he's done in assigning the referees, making sure we do have quality and quantity of referees available to us at all times. Um, my position on this is uh, I, uh, I, I do not want to make ex exceptions to the rule. Uh, it sets a precedent for, for other people to uh, request that we, we do so, and I just think that's going to be a lot of work and headache, and it's just going to defeat the purpose. That's my position. Ultimately, it's up to uh, the, the, the board as a whole to decide if an exception is to be made regarding this particular referee or for that matter, any other referees. I agree. I don't think you should. Not for me. No. I mean, I felt bad for her, but it's yes. just a I, I feel terrible you know? for her. I but, mean, it's, it's yeah. a kid. It's mm -hmm. a kid that's yeah. wanting to work and wanting to make some money. I get it. You know what I mean? I, she wants to do local, but it's you just know, that's it's the... Un it's unfortunate and all that stuff. You know, the, the only saving grace that I might say is that, you know, there's there are plenty of clubs in the area. And I, I would suggest that, you know, you know, getting in contact with the referee assigners at the other local clubs and, uh, you know, be added to the list of games for assignment. Uh, it should be no different, you know, if uh, you're able to, to, to play at another club. Geographically, it shouldn't be a problem to go to that same club and, and, and referee um, or even, you know, a closer neighbor. Uh, you, you can do the same thing. And if she wants to get involved in the club and help coach, you know, that's another story. No, if she's playing for another right, club. Playing, but, 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 but saying, if she's involved in the club, then we allow it. You know, if she mm -hmm. has no involvement in the club, then. All right, but I just wanted to make sure, and I wanted to get it on the record, that this, you know, this has nothing to do with, uh, you, know, you know, personal or biases or, you know, past history, anything like that. At the end of the day, it's a kid. She took the, 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 the course to, to referee. She's qualified to referee. Uh, she basically started out here refereeing also, so not only did she start out here, you know, playing, but she started out here refereeing, so I'd like to at least think that we, we, we helped her in her refereeing career if this is something she wanted to do, and uh, we wish her the best of luck where, wherever she may referee in the future. All righty, so, um, so... No, we were gonna we were gonna get to that um, after we, we do the the, the last uh, item of new business here. Okay. Um, I had forwarded this to all, all the board members. Um, I recently received an email uh, from FYSA stating that um, a, a new affiliate uh, 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 or a new club uh, submitted an application for affiliation with FYSA from Westlake. As all of you know, Westlake is the new community out west, um, and, and they stated that you know we had until January something whatever to, to respond. Um, uh, I know we've spoken about things like this in the past. I took it upon myself to go ahead and respond. Um, I've also forwarded you my response uh, to them. Um, if anybody has any objections to our position regarding that, uh, please let me know, and I would be more than happy to you know turn around and reverse you know, you know, my object, my previous objections, uh, basically what was said in the email, um, were you able to forward that to me, Corinne, or no? Yeah. Uh, what I had, uh, what the email had just, 
had stated was um, Westlake FC has submitted an application for new affiliation within your 15 mile radius. Please reply by no later than 3 p.m. on Friday, January 10th, 2020. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, the FYSA has a rule in their bylaws that um, um, any request for affiliation for, for a new affiliate to FYSA uh, has to be approved unanimously uh, by any club within a 15 mile radius of that applying club. Um, I believe us in Wellington, um, I, I would assume Gardens is in that 15 miles also. Um, and so what I had responded back and what I did was um, I had also copied the Wellington DOC on my response back since he is the one that called me uh, last week to discuss it um, to let me know the fact that somebody was applying so he had actually heard about it before I did. Um, and what I had resp my response back <coughs> was in my response um, let me read it Royal Palm Beach is opposed to approving any application for a new FYSA affiliated club and or program within a 15 mile radius especially since plans for a 553,000 square foot private soccer Academy international soccer boarding school have already been approved and is being built in the same small Westlake area as much as I don't trust or agree with Patrick I believe that he and his Wellington program would agree with me and support RPB's views and position on this matter all right, so those are my words coming out of Corinne's mouth <laughs> because I can't find it. <laughs> but so I, I thank you for sharing that. <laughs> and uh, does anybody have any objections or have different position regarding nope. that? And it's it's been in the news and all that. The the previous announcement about the you know five hundred and fifty thousand square foot or whatever it is uh, a facility it's basically going to be a, a door it's going to be like a img that uh, img academy that's uh, a local here uh, that's going to be focusing on like international soccer and everything um best of luck to them i don't see it happening but um you know best of luck with them i mean you know people have to dream sometime um amy if we want to go back to the treasures report for the rec program okay so um, beginning balance for the checking account was 7,100.35, ending balance of 10,141.19. For the savings started at 15, 658.28 ended with 10,658.81 for the month of November. Okay, motion to accept the treasurer's report for November with the checking balance ending $10,141.11. 19. 19, sorry. $10,141.19. Savings balance ending in November, $10,658.81. I second that. All right, all in favor? Any opposed? Um, we will go ahead and accept the treasurer's report for the recreation program with the numbers that were just uh, stated. Um, and with that, we will adjourn the recreation program. Um, portion of the board meeting at 6.50 p.m. I call to order the competitive portion of the board meeting. Uh, again, President's report and the DOC report. I have nothing to say. Uh, Amy, if you'd like to continue uh, by uh, stating the treasurer's report for the competitive program. Okay, so competitive checking started with 30,801.15. Ending balance 36473.82. Um, the savings was $10,017.23. Ending balance of $10,017.64. The um, stipend account started at $6,874 even, went down to $4,774 even. And uh, when we make our payments this week, <laughs> we're going to have to pull some money from competitive for something to make the, the coaches payments. Alrighty. Motion to accept the 
competitive checking balance as of November ten thousand. I'm sorry, thirty-six thousand four hundred seventy-three dollars and eighty-two cents. Savings balance ten thousand seventeen dollars and sixty-four cents, and the stipend account at four thousand seven hundred and seventy-four dollars. I second that. Uh, any objections? No. Already, the treasurer's report for the competitive program for the month of November uh, will be accepted or approved and accepted, um, and. We will move forward again to the registry referee report for the competitive program. Again, uh, Shinoy is not present, so we will have to shelf that until next month. Um, open comments for membership. Uh, again, I know everybody's very eager to comment or give their opinion regarding the program, but um, since nobody's willing to stand up and uh, come forward, we'll move forward. Um, unfinished business. Um, all competitive teams uh, are to continue practicing at CATS until further notice. Uh, the reason for this is because of the tightness financially. We are trying to uh, be as economically uh, or fiscally responsible as possible. Um, and if, if we can go that month uh, without um, having to uh, expend any additional costs on field usages, that would help the program tremendously um, and uh, I just wanted to share with everybody zone A and zone C uh, are presently opened and will remain open until January 12th and at that time they will be closed and zone B and zone D will open on January 13th until February 16th and then on February 17th all fields will be open and that's when the spring recreation program will begin on February 17th. Fernando, you might want to make a copy of that just so you know with regards to, to scheduling games. Um, I know there's no home games this weekend. Are there any games next weekend? No. Uh, let me so it. nothing until 2020? Uh, if I'm not wrong, yes. And the school, also middle school is done. And middle school, nothing or whatever. So we're let good. me see. And uh, Steve was uh, questioning that later because he's trying to uh, come up with a game plan for uh, lining the fields, and he just wanted to make sure the fields were lined w when we needed them. I know I have one January 4th. Yeah, January 4th, we have games. All right, so that's when we'll start back up again with the games. Yes, we had two games, uh, four games that weekend. And and does everybody understand zone A and zone C because no. we've, we've switched it around and that's so let's go over that it makes more sense now and then the village came up what with is the, the idea a? Field a? no before in the past you know how we have field one the little field <laughs> but that would be zone four made no sense when you so think a about is going to be one to four so a is the first letter number one is the first number so zone a is fields one through four b is zone five, b five and six is five and six Zone C is seven, and zone D is eight. You know seven and A are bad. Yeah, yeah. very bad. Very bad. Seven is destroyed. Seven is real bad. Seven is bad, which is C, is very bad. And um, I worry, you know, people are going to get, you know, injury. Well, I had, I had um, asked previously that we leave A and C open until uh, the January 12th because I figured with the holidays and everything that would be even though they'd be open they wouldn't be getting used a lot so that would kind of prolong their non-usage and then come january 12th they turn around and they get shut down for a month I, okay. I will follow up anyway with the coaches try to do every day so if it's no team's practice i'll let you know and we turn off lights yeah well no team should be on them regardless i mean i put that no no but i'm talking about there. the other areas you know all right all right all right. Our teams aren't practicing, and I know our seven teams aren't going to be practicing. So that means Monday, Mon technically Monday, Wednesday, is not going to be nobody. <clears throat> not until high school's over. But we're we're have, we're practicing tomorrow night. But it's going to be only you guys. Yeah, it's just us. So it's going to be only one field. For Thursday night. Tomorrow. Wednesday. Or Wednesday night. All yeah, right, and you guys will be on field eight, correct? Seven. Or seven, I mean. Well, whatever one's open. So, so one you to know. four, you need to. All right. I, I won't even schedule lights then. I'll just schedule for just zone just C. Just for, for, for zone C for tomorrow. C. And then Friday, there's nobody on Friday. Nobody's Friday there. Yeah. And then just shut everything down for Friday. So Thursday, both of them now? Yeah, Thursday completely. Yeah, because we have like a five or six teams on Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. 
And on Friday, go ahead and kill them for Friday. 11, 12, 13, then, 14, 11 girls, nines. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that people will, will be practicing Monday and, Monday and Tuesday. Maybe not Tuesday, be Christmas Eve. I can send an email Eve. and I hope yeah. the, you know, the, the coaches. Are yeah, have them respond who's going to be who's gonna be practicing Monday and Tuesday, if anybody. And you may as well get Thursday and Friday in there, so too. Technically, Monday is going to be just 16s, 17s, 18s. That's no, it. 17s aren't practicing Mondays. Until okay. high school's over. Okay, but that, that's the days that you guys have practice. Yeah, Monday and Wednesday we did. But the holiday. So it's going to be just the, the three uh, biggest teams. All right. So we'll send something out and then we'll get so the a confirmation. Practice on Tuesdays. Tuesdays. They're, yeah, they're there. There's so seven teams on Tuesday, Thursday. And I'll check. I mean, I should know that's my daughter's team, but it's Tuesday's Christmas Eve, so I don't, I'm not sure people are going to practice on yeah, Christmas the Eve. Two weeks of, it, of holidays. So now I, I just need now. to check it out with her if it's a 16th practice. In, in fact, I'm going to make an executive order here Oops. and just say, week. yeah, it just two weeks. nothing, nothing the next two weeks. For who? Anybody. Really? Or at least Monday through Wednesday, nothing. Okay. All right. Monday through Wednesday, nothing. All right, and we'll go, you know, a day after Christmas and Friday is fine, if anybody wants to. Did it's you guys? Conditioning. For what days? Whatever days or weekend. I have to talk with these Yeah, Are you out there on Monday at all or no? Uh, we haven't been because all right. of school. So. All right. Well, nobody should be out there Christmas yeah, Eve. That's like, you can't do that. That's <laughs> not right. I told you, these week they are in tests, too. Yeah, they're all in right. exam. So tomorrow, C will be the only one being used, and then we'll go. Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday with nothing. All right. All righty. Um, uh, player passes. This is the, the Amy thing here. Player passes um, will be will be pulled uh, as of January 1st for any outstanding balances if no arrangements were made. All righty. If they do make arrangements with you, we'll make exceptions. Um, so let's notify the team managers about that. Um, this will be um, the, the standard for all the teams this season, with the exception of the U11 girls team. Um, I had gotten an email. I had gotten an email today from the team manager saying that she's not going to forward a message that was sent to her or whatever. So I don't know if you just want to reach out to them and say, you know, if we can catch up or you know. Yeah, well, whatever. I'm just gonna say in in general, if you put, I mean, I know it's, and I and I put that in the email. If anybody read it, if you put your payment information, got soccer, and you expect money to be coming out every month and it's not happening, contact somebody. Check. Hey, I noticed I'm not having. I've had a few people <laughs> do that. So then I go check it. Oh, well, you never told me that it was in there because what happens if they don't have it in there, if they have a wrong card or whatever, decline, 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 and it keeps trying every day. And I've had that, you know, somebody put in their number, I don't know what they did, if it's a wrong card or what, it declined every day for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. So I contact the person, hey, what's going on? Because I don't check it every day, right. you know, and then all of a sudden I'm like, what's going on? So, all right. you know, you know, on them, they're only paying the deposit. I know there's issues in their their team or we're going to stick around or whatever whatever but right. still i mean come on <laughs> all right well you know keeping the same topic going here i i would like to not in good standing notifications the process to be sent out on january 2nd and i'm not saying physically january 2nd something gets mailed out mm -hmm. but you know and i'll get the information for you of where to do this or whatever mm -hmm. and sean actually was doing this also you know, so he's familiar with it or, or whatever. If you want to pass it on to somebody to do, because that might be a little too much. You yeah, actually. I guess, well, we'll actually have to have see maybe, what the list is. Because the matter is, we it. have to basically send a letter and give those people like a month. Yeah. yeah. Well, say, that's hey. why I want to start in January so proper notification is given. And uh, Corinne, maybe we'll have you um, do the standard little letter to them. And I mean, I have Amy, something saved. Yeah. The matter of is getting the list of who we're going to send it to and how much they owe. All right. That's that's the part. Because that you know the, the main wait. thing about the, the the not in good standing status to be like you know unarguable or whatever you can't you know whatever is proper notification time of notification. So we want to give people an opportunity that they were told that this is what is owed. 
um, and if it's not paid by a certain time period, you'll be placed in not good, you know, in, in bad standing, and uh, y your child's not going to be able to play soccer anywhere. Um, all righty, uh, new business. Um, last weekend or the weekend before, maybe it was last weekend, my daughter, <coughs> uh, a couple of members of her team participated in a neat little 5v5, 5v5 tournament over um, at Okahili and AYSO. Just looking around, it was, it was nice. It was actually nice. And I remember we did this, gee, maybe about 15 years ago. Uh, we had a 3v3 tournament. And uh, I remember, I remember uh, being in it. We had two guys, two of the competitive coaches, basically ran the whole thing, and all this. And um, you know, the way that was run was very similar to the way this tournament that I had been a part of this past weekend was run. And it's neat. Whistle blows. All the fields start when the whistle blows. Whistle blows again. That's the half. They all end at the half. They all end the game together. So all the games start and finish at the same time. So everything stays on schedule. One ref per field. Uh, one ref per field. Um, and it's uh, I'm gonna have to talk to Sean and see about goal goals because they're like lacrosse <coughs> size oh, goals. Little. They're like kind of yeah short little you know about like up to my head maybe I don't know what that is but. Um, and we'll see if that's something we can do. The, the reason for that is, um, uh, man, we need money. <laughs> we need money, and if if we can generate some additional, you know, revenue for the program to keep us operating, or else we're not going to be able to continue our, to grow our competitive program. I think the U16 coach had mentioned something to me about doing doing that type of thing. Alrighty. Like a month or so ago. But uh, you know, and 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 again, I'll 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 talk to Sean. Um, I know he's so busy right now. Um, <laughs> I just want to slap him. You have no idea. <laughs> so, yeah, we're so. gonna we gonna do a you know U nine to U twelve tournament. Um, yeah. Well, what was neat with them is they had um, they they had the boy they had the the boys on Saturday, the girls on Sunday. So they even split it up that way, um, and a lot of the age groups, you know, like like Max team. Um, they're a U15 team, but they have the majority of the team are actually U14, and they were put in the U19 age group. So, but it it was fun. They actually, I mean, missed out by a point. I mean, it was like <coughs> they won one game and tied two games, and it was like it was fun though. It was I don't know. It was just something about that. It just didn't seem. And and what I'm thinking, and and here's you know where I'm going for. I'm saying all right, all right, we do a little tournament. But we're also, I don't want to say manipulating, but we're also, it's almost a planned generation of revenue because what I'm thinking of doing is if we have this at the end of our rec season, between the rec seasons, basically like around the weekend that they had theirs, we can basically do a whole tournament with kids from the rec program. And so now we're at least being able to count on a certain number of teams in the age groups. Uh, I'll reach out to the DOCs in the area to, to, to support, send, send a couple of teams, you know, might have a problem with one of the clubs, but, but for the majority, you know, the, you know, you know, the other uh, DOCs will, will help us out because we support their, their tournaments. So. Uh, Do you have to have player passes and all that or is just anybody plays? Um, I don't believe, I'm not sure how that works. I'm not sure how that works. You have to, I know they have rules regarding like verification of age and all that. I guess, it would, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know how that works. I'll, we'll, we'd look into it if that's something to do. As much as I'd like to have it like now, I think it, the best time period for it would be in between the fall and spring rec seasons, uh, that downtime. You know when when all the kids are still excited about playing and you know and and during the holidays you know like around thanksgiving break and you know and all that a lot of people might not have things to do you know you know game wise so that might be a good thing um oh all right and then just some future suggestions to kind of close off the board meeting I was thinking of some things for you guys to think about that we will might be able to do. Might be fun. Might be able to get some income out of it too. 
Uh, well, first I wanted to pr propose that possibly Sean had all new committees and projects that come forth that would probably include something like this tournament we're talking about, maybe the the playoff tournament that we're going to be having in the in the in the spring. So something to think about there. Um, then I was thinking of a drop your kids off to Sean weekend program. Um, you know, parents might want the weekend off, drop the kids off at the field. Uh, no, is Sean, that a paid position? No, all volunteer. This would be all volunteer. Sean, Sean sure. would entertain the kids for the weekend. Um, and, you know, he's very creative. I thought he'd be perfect for this. He'd find ways, <laughs> he'd find ways to be able to entertain the kids and keep them busy while the parents, you know, had date night or whatever they would want to have. Um, then a great fundraiser, I think, would be kind of successful. The Sean Dunk Tank. Uh, a lot of people over the years may have issues with Sean, would like to possibly throw some things at him and have him fall in some water. We might make more money putting you in that dunk yeah. tank. <laughs> uh, and then this one I can see, this one I can see very, very popular. Uh, date night with Sean auction where we would actually auction Sean off to the members of our program and you know, for, for the highest bidder, that lucky highest bidder, would be able to have a date night with Sean for you know, one evening and um, be able to take photos with him and tell all of her friends or his friends that they were able to hang out with Sean that night. And then lastly, uh, you know, I've seen this in other areas, a Sean in a bathing suit calendar where each month Sean would represent that month in a different type of bathing suit. I don't know if that's something we could possibly, uh, you that, know. That would probably need approval. Me from personally, I think the Sean bathing suit calendar will outdo <laughs> the Royal Palm Beach magnet fundraising thing that we did. That's just my opinion. We wouldn't have to order 10,000 of them. We could just, we could just. But just th some things for you guys to think about. Uh, like some possible things. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, wait. Snakes. I mean, he's got reptiles. those available. Snakes, reptiles, your turtles, your tortoises. Yeah. He definitely does not like snakes, so that might be his. Basically, at the end of all, at the end of all these proposals, Sean will definitely be the face of the program in more ways, more ways than one. All right. With that being said, it is seven ten. Does anybody have anything else, Steve? Did you have anything you'd like to add? All right, 710, uh, we will adjourn the, the board meeting.